Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of A Triple E Prep, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of physics asked in A Triple E. Now, the last episode was of chemistry, and I was originally intending to continue that, but a lot of, you know, the viewers had requested for an episode of physics. So today we're going to be looking at some questions of physics and we're going to see how we can solve questions of physics easily. So let's start off with our first question. The electric current in a circuit is given by I equals I naught sine omega t plus theta. What is the dimension of theta? So is it seconds, one by second, meter per second, or is theta dimension less? So let's look at I equals I naught sine omega t plus theta. So omega is angular velocity, t is time, and then the theta here stands for phase difference. So since we're dealing with a phaser here, phasor quantities. Uh, we usually have phase difference as a quantity that's present in between the bracket. And this phase difference is usually an angle. So basically, it's the angular displacement between two vectors. So now we know that theta is an angle. <clears throat> we know that angles are measured in degrees, but we also know that they are dimensionless. So angles are dimensionless quantities with units. So we have a plane angle here, theta, which is dimensionless. So the correct option is option D, dimensionless. Now, <clears throat> you can also arrive at this answer by finding that theta is a plane angle and then looking at each of the questions. Second stands for time. It's the dimensions for time. One by second would stand for frequency which again theta is not, and meter per second will stand for either speed or velocity. So these are all dimensions for other quantities, so that means angle has to be option D, dimension less. So those are the two ways in which you can solve those questions. Now this question, as you've seen, we have checked out all the other options and found out the reasons why they aren't correct, and that's the good thing. That's the important thing with our lessons. We explain all of the options of a question so you have access to about four or five questions by discussing a simple question. Let's move on to another. The velocity varies with time according to the relation V equals 3T plus 4. The distance traveled by the body in T equals 2 seconds will be 10 meters, 12 meters, 14 meters, 16 meters. So, how do we solve this question? We know that velocity is represented as rate of change of distance, so dx by dt will be velocity. So we can write dx by dt as 3t plus 4. Now, this equation can be rewritten as dx equals 3t dt plus 4 dt. So we took dt to the right-hand side. Now, we need to find the distance traveled by the body. So therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to integrate this equation. So integral of dx, and let's take it from 0 to s, s being the distance traveled by the body in 2 seconds. And we will take 3 times integral t dt, where, t, where the integration is from 0 to 2, and plus 4 times integral of dt, again, and the integration is from 0 to 2. So, integral of dx from 0 to s will be equal to s minus 0, and integration of t dt will be t squared by 2, so 3 by 2 times t squared, and now t squared will be from 0 to 4. Plus 4 times integral of dt gives you t, and that is now taken from 0 to 2, those are the lower and upper limits. Now you have 3 by 2 times 
2 square is 4, 0 square is 0, so 4 minus 0, and then 4 times in the, inside the bracket you have 2 minus 0, 2 is the upper limit. So you have 3 by 2 times 4, so, four can, so 2 goes into 4 twice. So what you have is 3 times 2, which is equal to 6, and we have 4 times 2, that will be equal to 8. So you have 6 plus 8 as the value of s. So the value of s, distance traveled by the body in 2 seconds, will be equal to 14 meters. So s equals 14 meters. Therefore, the correct answer here is option C, 14 meters. So over here, we have an equation for velocity. We need to integrate it to an equation for distance. And then we put in limits so that we can get the distance traveled by a body in a given amount of time. So for here, it was in t equals 2 seconds. So we can take the lower limit as 0 and the upper limit as 2 seconds. And by integrating with limits, we got the value of s, the distance traveled by the body in 2 seconds, as 14 meters. That means option C is the correct option. Next question. When a projectile is at the highest point on its trajectory, the potential and kinetic energies are respectively maximum, minimum, ma minimum, zero, zero, maximum, maximum, and zero. So, the condition is that in a projectile motion, the projectile is at h max. That means it's at the highest point of its trajectory. Now, at this highest point, there will be no vertical component of velocity. Because as we move in a projectile, first the velocity, the vertical velocity component increases and then it becomes zero, decreases and then be becomes zero and then it comes back down and increases in the opposite direction. So, therefore, there is no vertical component at the highest point of the trajectory. So, that means the total velocity will be equal to v cos theta, that's the horizontal component. Now, kinetic energy is half mv squared, so at the highest point, it will be equal to half mv squared cos squared theta. So that means kinetic energy will be minimum. Now, on the other hand, potential energy equals mgh, that's gravitational potential energy, and since we are at the highest point on its trajectory, the potential energy will be mg times h max. So that means the value of potential energy will be maximum when the projectile is at the highest point. So that means among the following options, it's clear that option A is the correct option. Option B is incorrect because it says minimum potential energy, but here we have H max, so that's incorrect. Also, it says kinetic energy is zero, which is wrong because we do have horizontal components, so the kinetic energy will have will be at minimum, but it won't be at zero. Now, option C says zero and maximum. However, zero potential is incorrect because for that you have to be back on the ground without any height or without any gravity or mass for that matter. And maximum kinetic energy is when you have maximum velocity, but at the highest point, we have minimum velocity. So that means option C is incorrect and option D is incorrect because it says kinetic energy is zero, whereas we do know that there is a horizontal component to the velocity. That means the kinetic energy can be minimum. The kinetic energy can be at minimum, but it cannot be at zero because you, alter, because you already have a horizontal component and, that part, and that's going to affect the kinetic energy. So, among the four options, it is clear that option A is the correct option. That means potential energy is maximum because you're at the highest point, and kinetic energy will be at minimum because you have the least, you have the lowest velocity at that point. Now, let's look at another question. Two forces, F1 equals 7 plus two, 7i plus 2j newtons, and F2 equals minus 5i plus 3j newtons, act on a particle. 
the third force Fe that should act on a particle to make it move with constant velocity is 2i plus 5j minus 2i minus 5j minus 2i plus 5j 2i minus 5j so how do we solve this question well let's look at the question again the condition is that we should put in a force F3 which will ensure that the particle will move with constant velocity now what's the condition for a particle to move with constant velocity for that we must ensure that the net force acting on the particle has to be zero because when you have force acting on a particle it does not move with constant velocity it will move with a variable velocity that means acceleration acts on it so we need to ensure that F net is zero so that means the total the net value of the forces F1 F2 and F3 has to be zero now we know the values of F1 and F2 so that's 7i plus 2j plus minus 5i plus 3j plus F3 equals zero so let's take the I components together and the J components together we have 7i minus 5i that gives you 2i and 2i, 2j plus 3j that gives you 5j so 2i plus 5j plus F3 gives you zero so from this equation you'll get the force F3 as equal to minus 2i minus 5j so the value of F3 so the force that should act on a particle to make it move with constant velocity here is option B minus 2i minus 5j options A C and D are incorrect because they have different signs which will not add up to zero so that means it, there will be some force left out which will not make the particle move with constant velocity the correct option is option B minus 2i minus 5j newtons this is the final question of this episode we have two satellites of masses 3m and m they orbit the earth in circular orbits of radii r and 3r respectively we need to find the ratio of their speeds now remember that these satellites are orbiting the earth so that means they will have orbital velocity and the formula for orbital velocity in the chapter gravitation is under root of gm by r where g stands for the universal gravitational constant m stands for mass of the earth and r stands for the radius of orbit so we know that the value of g is constant everywhere in the universe and we know that both the satellites orbit the earth so that means m is also constant now this means the ratio of the speeds of the satellites is equal to the ratio of their radii which is under a root so v1 by v2 is actually equal to under root of r2 by r1 so therefore when you put in the values of r2 and r1 you get v1 by v2 as equal to under root of 3 r by r so r and r gets cancelled so you get under root of 3 is to 1 as the ratio of the speeds of the two satellites so that means among the options option B has to be the correct option so all the other options are incorrect 1 is to 1 means that the satellites will have the same radius 3 is to 1 means that the the one of the radii the second satellite will have a radius of 9r which is incorrect and option D would mean that the second satellite will have a radius of 81 which is again also incorrect so that means option B is the correct option for this question 
Now, that concludes this episode of AEEE Prep. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Brain Blitz Audios. If you liked what you saw, you can always share your views in the comment section down below. And also, you can hit the notifications icon for getting the latest updates about our videos. So, until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.